third grade, let's go ahead and take a look at lesson 503 for English language arts today. And as we're getting going, I want to know, what is a contraction? Do you know what a contraction is? Well, in case you're wondering, a contraction is when we're taking two words and we're putting them together to make one word. We'll look at some examples here in a moment. So today, I can make contractions by using two, oh, not works, that's going to be two words. Then we're going to be looking at finding similarities and differences between two different texts. So contractions. So a contraction is when you combine two words with an apostrophe. So let's see if we can match a couple of those words. So my first one that I have is he will. So if I have he will, that'll be he'll down below. I'm essentially taking he, I'm taking the last two letters of will, and I'm putting my apostrophe in the middle to make a brand new word. So I have he'll. Let's look at another, did not, didn't. I see that didn't has the word did, not is simply missing the O, and the apostrophe goes in between the N and the T. Let's take a look at another, they are. Let's see if you can figure out the meaning of they are, or the contraction that would match that one. Hopefully you said there. They, and then the A is removed, and the apostrophe goes between the Y and the RE. Next, she is. She's. Finally, we have, we've. So we know that when we have a contraction, contractions are when we take two words and combine them using an apostrophe. Let's go ahead and continue on with looking at some meanings of words and phrases in some sentences to work on some inferencing skills. So here we have a phrase, this place is a zoo. So we have some figurative language here. This is an idiom. Is the place really a zoo? Well, probably not. So my question to you is, what do we mean when we say this place is a zoo? Is it really a zoo? I know that I've said that before. So I know that when that phrase has this place is a zoo. Well, it's probably very busy and possibly unorganized because there's so much commotion going on. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. Here we go. We have the fog crawled across the field. Did the fog really crawl across the field? Hmm. I know that we're giving personification or human-like characteristics to the fog. This is another example of figurative language. So if it's crawling across a field, it's probably going to be moving very slowly. Next, it's raining cats and dogs. I've never looked outside and had cats and dogs actually raining down. So. I know when I hear that phrase, it's raining cats and dogs. It's not literally raining cats and dogs. It's just raining really hard or heavily. Next, my teammate is as quick as a jackrabbit. Oh, man. Wow, if they are quick as a jackrabbit, I know that they have to be exceptionally fast because rabbits are fast. So I know that the teammate is very fast. How about this one? 
I could sleep standing up. <sighs> it makes me want to yawn. If I am that tired that I could sleep standing up, that means I'm ready to fall asleep on my feet. That means I must be very, very tired. So I know sometimes we have phrases that are figurative language. Figurative language gives special attention, putting either personification or making a phrase such as a idiom by giving additional words and meanings to these phrases. Coming up next, we're going to get ready to compare, just like in our I can statements, some similarities and differences between two different texts. We're going to look at two different individuals. The first one is a girl named Kara. The second one is a girl named Leandra. Sorry, Leandra. Kara and Leandra are both going to go on vacation, but they might have different experiences with it. Let's take a look. Kara's vacation. Kara's vacation. Whoops. Kara's vacation with her family this summer was great. They flew to the island of St. Lucia in the Caribbean for an entire week. While in St. Lucia, they enjoyed terrific meals out in restaurants and went snorkeling almost every day. When it was time to leave, they decided to return to the island again next year, maybe for longer than one week. So I know when I was reading about this, Kara had a family vacation, said it was great. Looks like they went to the island of St. Lucia. They got to enjoy meals out at restaurants and went snorkeling almost every day. They really enjoyed their trip because they decided to return to the island again next year for maybe even longer than a week. Let's take a look at Leandra's vacation. This past winter, Leandra went with her family to Colorado for a two week vacation. Oh, well that's something a little bit different. I see Leandra's was on a two week vacation. I also see um, that she went in winter for her vacation, but Kara's vacation was in the summer. I also see that her family went to Colorado. They flew to a small mountain town so they could go skiing most of the time. So they went skiing. There they had some amazing dinners at local restaurants. The family really enjoyed the trip. But next year, they want to go somewhere warmer. So that's something different. They don't want to go back to the same place. They want to go to a different place. It also looks like they went skiing most of the time. Versus over here, I see that in St. Lucia, they went snorkeling almost every day. Okay, so let's talk about some similarities and some differences between these two texts. So something that's similar is they both went on a family vacation. I know family vacations can be a lot of fun. I also know not only did they both go on to a family vacation, but I know that they went out to eat. Um, at restaurants with family. So they went with their family to eat out at the restaurants during the week. I also know that they had to take an airplane because they flew to both those locations. So I know Leandra's family flew to get to Colorado and Kara's family went by plane to get to St. Lucia. So both families flew on a plane to get 
to their vacation. All right, so that's something a little different and special for each of them. Finally, I also know that they decided to go on a vacation again the next year. So they want a vacation again. So they want to go on a vacation. So I know that these are some things that are the same about both girls. Both had family vacations. Both went out to eat with family. Both flew on a plane to get there. Both want to make sure that they go on vacation again the next year. Well, what are some things that are different about this? So some differences about them, well, Kara's was in the summer. Leandra's was in the winter. I know Kara got to go snorkeling on hers while Leandra went skiing. I know Kara's family went for one week and I know that Landa's family, I think it said two weeks. So her family's gone for two weeks. I also know that um, something that's going to be a little bit different about each of them is that they want to go back to the island again next year and Leandra's family wants to go somewhere different. So they're not exactly the same. So over when I get ready to put what is different about each of them. Whoop. Something that is different. So Kara, it was a one week trip. And then for Leandra, we said it was two weeks. I know that Leandra went skiing while Kara's family went snorkeling. I also know that um, Kara's family went during the summer. But Leandra's family went in the winter. And then finally, Leandra's family decided to go someplace different next year. And not only does she, her family want to go somewhere different, but Kara's family liked their trip so much, they decided that they wanted to go to the same location. Because it was such a good time. So this is when we're doing our comparison third grade. We are looking for things that were the same between both stories, but then we found things that were different, things that were particular just to Kara's family and things that were particular just to Leandra's family. Let's go ahead and take a look, and we're going to look at another story this time. This time, we're going to look at two individuals named Antonio and Jake. We are going to look for similarities and differences between both of these stories. I can see in the picture, it looks like both have instruments that they're maybe about. One's maybe playing the piano, maybe the other one is playing a flute. So let's get ready to take a look. You're going to be comparing two texts for similarities and differences as well this week. So this says Antonio. This year, I decided to start taking piano lessons. We have a piano in the house because my sister plays. 
Her teacher said that he can teach me at home. For the last two years, I've been taking guitar lessons. Because I can play guitar a bit, I don't need to learn things like notes and scales. But I will need to learn what it looks like on a piano. When I was learning guitar, I practiced a few minutes each day. When I'm learning piano, I practice for 15 minutes three times a week. I can't wait until my sister and I can play piano together. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Jake. So for the last few years, I've been learning to play the violin. Okay, so this is a little bit different. So over here, I know that Antonio is doing piano. And I know over here that we have Jake and Jake plays the violin. So for the last few years, I've been learning to play the violin, but now I want to learn to play the clarinet. So this person also plays another instrument they're interested in learning. No one in my family plays any instruments. Well, that's a little different because Antonio, his um, sister, I think, played the piano as well. Um, I think I saw that. We have a piano in the house because my sister plays. Okay. So I know that over here, Jake said nobody in my family plays any instruments. That's different over here because Antonio said that his sister plays the piano and also Antonio's been taking guitar lessons. So it looks like Antonio also might be playing two instruments and it looks like Jake might too. So that's actually a similarity if they're both playing two instruments. So I better kind of note that. So I see Antonio plays two, and I'm going to put instruments and just kind of abbreviate. And Jake also does two instruments. Okay. It says, we will need to buy a clarinet, but my music teacher at school will teach me to play. Violin and clarinet are very different, but I already know notes and scales. That will help me with a new instrument. When learning violin, I practice for 15 minutes three times a week. When I'm learning the clarinet, I can practice the same amount of time, and I can't wait to play in the school band. Oh, well, that's something a little bit different. Looks like Jake wants to play in the band, but it looks like Antonio wants to be able to play music with his sister. So that's something kind of different two between them. Okay, so if it's different, I need to use a different color. That's blue. This one's yellow. All right. I know that they're both practicing for about 15 minutes, three times a week. All right, and then three times a week for the piano. So that's another thing that's going to be the same. So we have lots of things that are kind of the same over here. So let's get ready to kind of add to some of our knowledge and start working on like our similarities and differences. So something that I know, is it something similar? Is that both of them already have instruments. We have um, the playing of the uh, violin and then the playing of the guitar. Nobody in the family plays instruments. That's something specific just to Jake. I remember we read that, and that was something that was kind of different just about Jake. Well, let's take a look at another one. Already plays an instrument. Well, that's both of them. Both of them already play an instrument. I also know that they have to practice three times a week. That was something we read that was something similar. Having lessons at school. Oh, I remember that when I was reading about Jake, it said Jake's music teacher would have to kind of like teach him at school. So I know Jake's going to be having additional lessons at school to help him. Okay, what about already knowing the notes 
and scales. Well, I remember that it said Jake, because he was doing the clarinet and the violin, they're both really similar. So because of that, they already knew the notes and scales, so they didn't have to learn them all over again because both instruments use notes and scales. All right, so something that is a little different over here. Well, on Antonio's family, he already has his sister who plays an instrument. We know that he is going to be having lessons at home by doing the piano and the guitar. And we do know on getting an instrument, they don't have to um, get a piano because there's already a piano there. And so it doesn't look they need to buy that one. But I believe on the clarinet, they Jake's family would have to buy the clarinet because they didn't own a clarinet. So that's something that they had to get. So here we have some things that are different, things that are different for Jake and things that are the same. So one thing that you're going to be doing is third grade, you are going to have that opportunity to practice doing some comparison when you go into module five, you're gonna go into lesson 503, investigation text time. Let's go ahead and take a look. So it says read the lesson and complete the activities in the lesson. When you get to the end, you're gonna have a quiz. So you're gonna have some review as you're going through about what are contractions, you're going to review a little bit about figurative language, such as a simile, a metaphor, an idiom, personification, hyperboles, alliteration. You're going to have some practice with making connections. And when you get to the last page, you have two different stories. The mystery of the spooky house and the mystery of the missing toys. For both of these stories, okay, you're going to be comparing them in your quiz. Your quiz is going to be five questions, but it's going to be over these specific texts. All right, so you got this third grade. Good luck.